Now let's go straight to my next guest. Joining me now is Jenny Tayer, investigative border and immigration reporter for The Daily Caller. Jenny, thanks so much for coming on to the U.S. Report. I got to ask you about the migrant crisis in New York City, which is now reaching a breaking point with asylum seekers now being forced to sleep on the streets in front of hotels and hostels and other places. Now, New York City used to be a sanctuary city. What happened here? Well, you're right, and it still is. New York City has been a sanctuary city for migrants, and that's been a really big attraction for them coming from the southern border. But now it's kind of this effect where they're seeing that their words are actually drawing a lot of people to come to New York City. Now, of course, that was in addition to buses that the Texas governor sent to New York City. However, this has been happening for a while before the buses, after the buses, during the buses, that people are also coming on their own because they hear about what kind of benefits they get in New York City. And even this week, we heard that colleges and universities are being uh, leveraged by the city to have students actually help some of these people with their asylum claims. And so you have to ask, you know, are these things drawing more people to come or are they telling people, you know, we don't have the room for them, which is what the mayor has done and even deployed some flyers to the southern border to tell people they're out of room. Well, yeah. And so where is the mayor on all of this? Because the mayor, Eric Adams, was a big progressive who welcomed, uh, you know, the idea that migrants would come in. And everything I've seen from him lately has been saying, no, 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 no. We actually can't have any more. And he's also been trying, I think, to ship even some to Canada. Um, is this the case of progressives being bit on the backside by reality? Well, that's right. He was busing them to other localities in the state, and he is actually increasing pressure on the federal government, on the Biden administration, and recently had a meeting with DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to discuss this. We don't know really the outcomes of this meeting. However, it does appear that this has caused the federal government to bring attention here to look at this issue, because now they're having members of their own party call on them for help. And now, apparently, the government is removing a lot of the troops that were on the southern border. Tell us about that. And the, the Biden administration has been claiming a win and saying border uh, crossing numbers have gone down. But is this correct? And what's actually happening? Right. So the Defense Department has drawn down over 1,000 troops that they sent on 90-day deployment uh, from the Department of Defense. So those troops will be leaving and a few will remain. Uh, however, this does not mean that there will not be soldiers at the border. Actually, there are many Republican states, I believe it's 13 that have deployed uh, through an action of the state of Texas to ask them to help them out. So there are still soldiers down there. There's also many intelligence teams and state police that have been deployed by other Republican states to help with this issue. Meanwhile, while the troops are being drawn down by the federal government, border numbers are spiking back up. We saw in the Washington Post this week that after a month of victory from the Biden administration, a number that we hadn't seen uh, dip before, which was illegal migrant encounters, you know, we saw it dip in the month of May. I'm sorry, in the month of June to around 99,000. Well, it's back up. Now it's at 130,000 in the month of June and July, I'm sorry. And so they're seeing a surge again. They're seeing large groups just in Arizona this week. They saw a group of over 500 people from over a dozen countries. And that's continuing in many sectors of the southern border here. So we're seeing a surge still. And hang on, Jenny, this, this, this can't be right, because the Biden administration said they hand, had a handle on all of this and that, you know, Kamala Harris was going to be in charge of the border. Um, have we heard anything from her on all of this? That's a good question. You know, Kamala Harris, the vice president, was tasked with addressing the root causes of migration. Uh, for my own experience as a reporter covering this issue, I've been down to Central America a few times, and I've been able to speak with migrants down there about this issue. And I've asked them myself, has she solved these issues in your country? Are things getting better at the least? 
and I've heard a resounding absolutely not. And we know that there's still many more migrants coming. Mexico has caught large numbers coming through their southern border that are bound for the U.S. according to their data. So we know that there's more to come here. Now, on the Republican side, presidential hopeful Tim Scott has said he will visit the southern border, and his campaign said in a statement to your publication, The Daily Caller, uh, that he was on his way. What do you make of that? Do you think he's going to have any chance to move the needle on this debate? Well, this has certainly been a hot issue for these 2024 Republican contenders, because there's a lot that can be proposed here by their party. Now, we've seen several other Republican presidential hopefuls go to the border already. Nikki Haley was the first, the former United Nations ambassador, followed by Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, who many of us know his actions on immigration. One of the trademarks has been sending flights of migrants to Martha's Vineyard and to Sacramento, California. And so we are seeing the third presidential candidate go. We also saw a Democratic presidential candidate, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., travel to Yuma, Arizona, at the southern border there. And so it's interesting to see what their reactions have been to the surge and what they've seen. And a lot of it goes down to what the cartels are doing down there. And they're looking to do more. Some have gone as far as to say that they would declare the cartels in Mexico as foreign terrorists.